Thank you, Sarah, for the kind introduction and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present today. So I will uh, present our paper on the Yule enlargement and temporary migration, which is joint work with Matthias Hertweg. And yes, just to start, so the um, European Union acceded um, new member countries from Eastern Europe in the 2000s, uh, but Germany initially restricted its uh, their access to the German labor market. So nationals from these new member states could only um, work freely in Germany starting in 2011 and Romania and Bulgaria followed in 2013. So, and we note that after this successive opening of the German labor market for those nationals, there was a strong surge in CEE migration to Germany. So since 2011, uh, more than 5 million um, CEE nationals migrated to Germany. At um, the same time, so we saw a very large inflow of those um, nationals to Germany. Nevertheless, their unemployment rate dropped um, sharply. They, it felt comparable to Germans. So we um, see this as a sign of uh, labor market oriented migration. And at the same time, behind this large gross inflow of um, CEE migrants, we've seen a large outflow. So more than 3 million people of the CE countries also left Germany in the same period of time. So, and facilitated by the free movement of workers, which allows the EU nationals to move freely across borders in Europe and to work, um, temporary or uh, mi return migration was very common during this period. So why is out migration or temporary migration so important when thinking about labor market effects of immigration? So an immigrant's decision to leave or to stay in the receiving country is um, not random. New immigrants typically work in jobs in the beginning um, below the formal qualification level, which then results in also in a um, significant wage gap to the um, domestic workforce. The longer they stay in the receiving country, the, the, the qualification mass match between the job task and their own skill level uh, tends to shrink and also the um, wage gap tends to decrease. But those who are not very successful in the receiving country, in their labor market of the receiving country, usually tend to leave. And this leads to a further positive selection of immigrants who stay. So those who are successful, they will rather um, stay in the um, receiving country. And this suggests, we call them in our paper, we call them these stayers. So those immigrants who stay more time, they are even more closely geared to the uh, domestic labor and demand than those uh, new arrivals. So when estimating um, the effects of immigration on the domestic labor market, usually, um, well, there are several issues when doing that. So on the one hand side, there's a select, many studies use the um, spatial variation immigration density. So on the one hand side, it's um, not random to which um, regions the immigrants move. So usually immigrants would go to prosperous regions, which would then lead to an upward bias of the migration, estimated migration effects. So this is typically um, addressed using a shift share instruments to using past settlement patterns. But recently, Jäger et al. Uh, point out that in the presence of dynamic adjustments process, so adjustment processes to previous migration inflows, which are still ongoing at the current time, um, likely conflate the negative. So we assume that the short run effects are negative and the medium run are positive. So that these estimates conflate these two effects. And to disentangle the um, short and medium run effects, they uh, suggest to control for current and lagged immigration inflows and to instrument them accordingly. Mm. Yeah, and this then isolates the violation in, uh, variation in the current migration uh, patterns that is uncorrelated with current labor demand shocks, that is through this shift share instrument, and with adjustments to earlier immigration and flows. We further ARC that, so they, uh, in their paper, they look at the United States where temporary migration is not very common. 
But in Europe, we act that this, in, especially in the European Union, where we have the free movement of workers, we act that ignoring that migration is partly temporary generates a further bias. So therefore, we suggest to um, um, distinguish between new arrivals, so immigrants who've just arrived, and stayers, as we call them. So those immigrants who um, remain in the German labor market for um, a significant period of time and to take these explicitly into account. So that is our general approach. So in the following, I will first give you an overview of who are these immigrants who come to Germany and who are those who leave immediately and who are those who stay a little longer. And then I'll give, um, describe our methodology and uh, give an overview of our, our results. So yes, we are using an administrative data set. We are using the sample of integrated labor market biographies, which is a 2% random sample, um, which covers all dependent employees and also uh, covers unemployment histories of persons. And we concentrate on the years 2005 to 2017. So as we are interested in migration effects, we distinguish between several groups. So on the one hand side, we have the, as we call them, natives. These are persons that were only observed having a German citizenship. And then we have earlier migrants. So these are persons who have some kind of migration background. So at least were observed at least one period with a foreign nationality, but have no direct or immediate migration history. And then within the group of recent immigrants, we distinguish between new arrivals, so those who are just in their first year in Germany, and stayers, so those who are in their second to fifth year in the uh, German labor market. So, yeah. And here I uh, present you a headcount of the immigrants in their first year, in, in the first five years in the German labor market. So the blue bar always counts the number of persons who are in the first year. And we see here that's the number of recent immigrants in the first year in 2011. And the red bar in 2012 then gives the number of persons in the second year. So these persons, these numbers should actually correspond to each other, but we see that there's a decrease. And in the third year, the green bar, it decreased further. And fourth and fifth, we don't see happening much anymore. But we see that this pattern is very stable over all years. So the largest drop appears to be from the first to the second year. And here I plot the um, aggregate um, migration um, densities. So the blue uh, line gives the num or the density of new arrivals relative to the um, domestic labor force. So new arrivals, remember, are those in their first um, year in the German labor market. And we see indeed that in 2011, so when um, CE nationals were granted access to the German labor market, there's a uh, strong increase. And then there's another strong increase in 2013 when Bulgaria and Romania were granted access. And in 2015 when, or 14 when uh, Croatia was given access. And the, the number of stairs it's, um, increases more steadily over time. So who are those who leave and who are those who stay? So here um, I plotted the, on the left hand side, you see the wage dynamics and I distinguish between groups, uh, between several groups. So the blue um, dot gives the average wage gap of immigrants who leave after one year, so who do not stay um, permanently. And we see that they have a very um, strong wage gap to um, the um, domestic or to natives. So the the relative wage is around 50%. And also for those who leave after two years, the wage gap is very, um, very large, even though it decreases slightly. What is also very interesting, I think, is as the green and the yellow um, lines. So those are persons who leave after three or after four years, and we see that it's just in the year or in the two years before they leave, there's a um, drop in the relative wage. Whereas for those who stay at least five years, there's a steady increase in the relative wage. So these appear at least uh, to be more successful with regards to um, the wage. 
And we see a similar pattern with the unemployment dynamics. So those who uh, leave after or in the third or fourth year, um, just before they leave, there is an um, increase in their unemployment rates. So this then also translates in, um, in a decrease of the um, gender wage gap um, the longer they, the immigrants stay in Germany. So in the first year, the wage gap is very large compared to na natives. So this is the average now over all those recent immigrants. The average wage gap to natives is 37% and to earlier migrants, it's somewhat smaller. So these are those with just some migration background, it's 30%, and it decreases over time to 17 or 7%. And um, probably part of this uh, decrease is due because the recent immigrants gained some country-specific experiences, and this helps them, them to find um, jobs which fit their uh, skill level better. And of course, as I've shown just before, there is selective out-migration. So those who perform poorly are more likely to leave the German labor market. So what do we learn from this for our econometric um, analysis? So as I said in the beginning, so stayers, so those who remain in the German labor market for more than a year are uh, much more closely on domestic labor demand. And um, yeah, when we want to est estimate these uh, potentially opposing effects of new arrivals and stayers, we have to take that into account. So to capture both effects of current as well as past immigration, we include stocks of new arrivals and stocks of stayers in our um, estimation approach. So we estimate the effect of the EU immigration on labor market outcomes in Germany, and we exploit the spatial variation. So we um, look at the immigration densities across 75 um, commuting regions in West Germany over time. And we then uh, estimate the effects on regional wage growth rates along the wage distribution. So following um, an approach by Dustman et al. So we uh, group the wage, uh, the wage distribution of natives, the, the local uh, native wage distributions into wage deciles. And for earlier migrant, we do the same, just that we uh, look at wage quartiles. That is given, um, that is because we have um, a smaller number of um, observations for earlier migrants, so we can only do it for wage quartiles. And then, moreover, we estimate the effects on uh, regional employment growth. So, the conventional um, regression um, specification for estimating migration effects is regressing um, the wage growth in some region here denoted by subscript R, on the migration density in this uh, specific region. So the current uh, migration density. And we, um, in our dynamic specification, we more, furthermore, we include the second term, the, the red term here, which is the, um, so Jäger et al, they propose to include here um, the, the lect, um, or past migration inflows, we instead say because not all of those who are in their first year actually stay for a significant period of time in Germany. So we instead include here as a second term the number or the stock, the density of stayers, those who are in that second to fifth year in the German labor market. And as I said, so usually, um, yes, obviously it's not random where immigrants go. So we have to control somehow for the um, endogeneity of these uh, regional immigration densities. And we follow the popular um, approach that is the IV approach using past settlement pa uh, uh, patterns. So yeah, which is just the idea is that the, um, the regional share of um, migrants from some country of origin O in base year, so in some base period long ago, is um, less exogenous to current labor market demand. 
Nevertheless, as Jäger et al. point out, this is not true if there are dynamic adjustments to previous um, migration and flows. So only if there were no um, dynamic adjustment, only then would this um, IV approach actually work. So what they suggest, as I said, was to include current and past migration flows to control for this dynamic um, adjustments. And yeah, we essentially follow the same approach, just that we further re uh, refine this um, past migration measure. And another thing that they point out for the US, there is um, not much variation over time in the composition of recent immigrants by um, nationality. So since I think the 1970s, the share of immigrants having a Mexican um, nationality was stable, for instance. So yeah, and in Germany, the, it, uh, on the other hand, there is more variation, especially um, due to this um, sudden um, allowance of the free movement of workers for the CE nationals in 2011 and 2040. And this then helps us to separately identify the impact of current and past immigration. So this May I already... ask a question before you, you move to the results? Yeah. Um, the, the migrants you are considering, so the migration shock or the devolution of migration, is it limited to the sea nationals or is it like any nationality? So including Turkish and others? Because so, it, you, I mean, I think the paper is called, has the, the enlargement in the title, but uh, I, I was just wondering whether you disregard the other migrants when you look at the, the wage fund. So we um, include all EU nationals, but let me just go back here. So, uh, no, I don't have here the uh, migrant, um, the nationality composition, but we see it's very, um, so the CEE nationals form the, the by far the largest share of these um, immigrants, because mm -hmm. that's, I think that's already illustrated by these um, strong increases just after they were granted free rights of movement. Okay. But yes, we include all EU nationals, so they're also Southern Europe, uh, EU members. Okay, thanks. Maybe also have a follow up in terms of your IV strategy. So you have two endogenous variables, that's right. And, and I, I, maybe you explain it. It wasn't quite clear to me. How do you create two instruments using the shift chair? Yeah, indeed, I've, I um, kind of neglected that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so we have two endogenous variables. So we um, construct, so the construction of the current instrument is straightforward. And um, so we just instrument using the current shifts. And for those who are in the second to fifth um, year in Germany, we just use the um, sum of those who were predicted to arrive for t uh, in, in the past, in the previous four years. So we have two different um, IVs for two endogenous variables. Yeah, with, with the same region of share, but then you change the shift. In the, exactly, and the, the second IV is the sum over four mm -hmm. years. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so this leads me already to the results. And um, as I said, we estimate the effects along the wage distribution. So this is the, are the results for the native um, population. So persons with some kind of German nationality. And um, perhaps let me start with the effects on the average, on wage growth of average wages. So we see, um, so the first panel just shows the conventional estimates. So just controlling for current um, immigration and flow. And we see that the current migration and flow dampens regional wage growth by 0.8 percentage points. Mm. And panel B, and then, um, we refine this approach. And so uh, the inflow of 1% uh, inflow of new arrivals dampens regional wage growth by around 1.2 percentage points. But afterwards, the amount, uh, the regional density of stairs then exerts a positive effect, which is significant. And 
where the effects appear to be strongest in the first and the lowest wage decides. So we have a strong negative effect, but also a signif strongly a significant positive catching up effect afterwards. So perhaps that's more easily um, illustrated here graphically. So here I plot the, um, so the green bar is the short term estimate and the blue bar is the, the, the medium run um, estimate and we see the um, indeed the negative short run estimate is follow effect is followed by a positive uh, medium run effect and what is interesting so here the green line gives the density of recent immigrants so where would they be located according to their observed wage in the um, native local wage distributions and we see that the largest share so uh, around 50 percent of these recent arrivals is locate is working in very um, low wage sector so they're located in the first wage decile and indeed that's also where we observe the strongest negative effect and also here we see that the density of stairs so already less um, relatively less um, stairs work in uh, are located in the first wage decides which again points towards this positive selection Maybe again, a question of interpretation here. Mm -hmm. So what you show is that in the first year, migrants have a negative effect on the wages of natives, but then those that stay longer, then they have a positive effect or is it relative to the first year ones? So why are, are they like substitute the first year and then they become complements to native or what is the interpretation there? Um, yeah, so I mean, also um, I will, yeah, so I mean, also Jäger et al, they show it just using the current and the previous inflows, they show a similar pattern. First, there's this negative shocks, and then, I mean, obviously, also there are general equilibrium adjustments, and so also internal migration, capital reallocation could take place. But we further show that because we have this um, selected subgroup of immigrants who stay, so probably, yeah, as you said, they probably rather complementary, they might lead to, I don't know, promotion of those um, natives, if, especially because these um, recent arrivals work in low wage sector or low skill jobs. So that's our interpretation, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So the uh, second conclusion is that indeed, as um, was proposed, so the um, conventional estimate or yeah, approach conflates the negative short run and the um, positive medium run. So it's very clearly that, yeah, it's actually kind of a sum of the um, positive and the negative effects, the conventional estimate. And that's again, stable over all wage decides. So what is interesting, so we have this, um, these, this dynamic effect. So we can um, inspect how, how the effect of a 1% inflow of um, permanent immigrants, so immigrants who do not leave, so who would stay at least five years, um, affect the regional wage growth. So these are the effects on the um, mean wages. And we see that already after three years, the combined, so that's the, the combination of both effects um, becomes significant um, differently from zero. And here in the panel B, we adjust it because, as I said in the beginning, not all um, immigrants who arrive stay. So we have to kind of um, downward um, these um, densities. And then, yes, the, the positive catching up effect becomes smaller. But also in that case, our, after five years, the effect is not uh, significant and, um, anymore. And this also has important um, yeah, effects on the overall interpretation of our results so, or of migration effects. So the um, conventional effect, that's the blue um, line here, suggests that the um, effect, the wage depressing effect is permanent. So over all years, um, the, the um, migration inflow um, permanently depresses wage growth, whereas our dynamic estimates um, are also um, significantly negative in the short run. But after some time, they start, um, there's a positive catching up effect. 
And um, this is here an out of sample prediction. We see that already from 2018 on the effect becomes close to insignificant. So that's um, one thing to keep in mind. So then I said in the beginning, we um, distinguish um, or we also want to look at the group of earlier migrants, so persons with some kind of migration background, which probably are closer substitutes to um, the recent immigrants. Um, but we do not find uh, significant results on their average uh, or on their wage growth. So, um, yeah. That might also be due because here we are looking at wage quartiles. So remembering here for the recent immigrants, uh, for the natives, also only the first two wage D sites were significant. So there might be some conflation there. And we also look on the effects on domestic employment and we see that there is a positive effect on for natives. Um, on um, total employment growth in the short run and especially on full-time employment, whereas we see a negative effect on part-time employment. So there might be some shifting from full-time to part-time employment. We do not see, however, any um, significant longer run adjustments to previous migration inflows. So suggesting that the effect, the positive effect on domestic employment is more permanent. For earlier migrants, we also find a positive um, permanent employment effect. No, um, however, we cannot disentangle the effects between full-time and part-time employment. So yes, the uh, research on immigration effects to uh, Germany in the 1990s whether generally found um, smaller um, labor market effects among natives, but they found um, clearly negative effects on earlier migrants, particularly on the employment margin. And so we find generally more um, favorable um, results, especially for earlier migrants and on the employment uh, margin. So we argue that there are two reasons for our um, findings. So. First, the German labor market has become more flexible over the past 20 years. So there's, for instance, more subcontracted uh, labor, um, which allows them the recent immigrants to more quickly uh, find a job. And yeah, and especially if these new jobs are located mainly in the low pay sector, that might help um, natives and earlier migrants to find complementary or to improve on their job position. And also in the 1990s, the composition or the migrant composition was very different. So it was mainly a refugee immigration from the Balkans, uh, which had stronger labor market barriers. And many of them also had to leave Germany already after a um, few years. So this time we see very different patterns. So yes, this leads me already to the conclusion. So we've seen that a large part of this recent EU immigration was uh, temporary and we see that it's selective which um, immigrants leave because mostly those stay who are successful in the German labor market. And we find temporary negative effect at the bottom and top of the wage distribution for natives, for um, earlier migrants, not so much. On the other hand, we find very positive um, employment effects for natives and earlier migrants, especially on full-time employment. And we show that the conventional short-term estimates of immigration indeed conflates the opposing. So the positive, uh, the negative short run and the positive longer run effects. And furthermore, we argue that for Germany, it's appropriate to take into account that, that there's um, temporary migration so that only a subset of immigrants stays permanently. And this then um, shows that the initial wage dampening effect is only temporary and not permanent. Yes, <laughs> that was mom from my side. Um, looking forward to your questions and comments. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, uh, Luisa. That was that was an interesting talk. Um, I mean, I have I have some questions. Maybe um, uh, some people in the maybe I let the panelists first. So um, or any any other. Okay, so I see one hand raised. So Lucas has a question. Lucas, I will I will um, allow you. Oh, I cannot. Sarah, can you allow Lucas to unmute? Seems that I I don't have the right. Just give me a second. I don't see Lucas anymore. Ah, yeah. Yes, go ahead, Lucas. Thanks. Uh, um, hi, Lisa, you hear me? Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting. Just one small question, like, how do you deal with the recent refugee crisis in Germany, like from 2015 onwards, like, how can this change your results or what will happen if you just restrict your period of analysis to the, uh, before 2015? That's that's just my, my question. I didn't understand the last part. So, but let me just start um, with the beginning. So yes, of course, refugee immigration was um, played a large role, but um, so we are using administrative data. So only of person who are already have some access to the formal German labor market. And refugees have initial barriers, so they can um, not, they have restrictions to work. So perhaps I can show these. Yes, yes, I understand. But it could be also that these refugees could have a labor demand effect. No, it could also affect by other channels, not only by the labor supply. Because I have seen some papers that are trying to analyze if there could be a labor demand from this uh, refugee crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean on labor demand? Yes, yes. So it's like, it could change the results because of that, not because the refugees are taking the jobs, but because they are consuming goods and services that might increase the, the demand. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, so unfortunately, we cannot control for that no? because they are not included in our data set. So we can only work with those immigrants who actually not necessarily have found a job, but are either employed or registered unemployed persons. Yes, and that was the last point that said, maybe if you restrict the data until 2015 and see if the results change, just like ah, because- Ah, okay, now I get it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could definitely try that. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, thank you. So there is a question uh, from the chat. Uh, so I will I will read it uh, uh, so that it's, it will be easier. So um, the question is to show the equivalent OLS results for the um, for the wage effects along the native distribution. So do you have any any OLS um, OLS estimates to to show? Um, yes, sure. For so yes, here we have the um, OLS regression estimates for the. Um wage effect along the native wage distributions. And here I just show it for the um, dynamic specification. And we see, so indeed, so these are the IV estimates so that indeed the um, short term uh, run estimate becomes more negative than the convent, so the, the, the simple OLS estimate. And by the way, so here we replicate the um, the approach by Jäger et al. So just using the stock or the density of current arrivals and the lack of new arrivals. But with SIR, so I think for Germany or for Europe, our approach makes more sense. All right. Um, so uh, it's nice that we are on this slide. I have a question. So, I mean, it seems that your effects are, are quite big, right? I mean, even they are they are really big, I think. Uh, particularly, like given that we look at, at only some B sites, um, do you have any ideas um, uh, what's going on? I mean, it, it, you you show a lot of things, and uh, you know, like uh, persistence over time or not persistence and, and everything. But I miss a bit like the mechanisms, like like uh, what is behind this? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm a bit like, uh, like, whoa, that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good point. So first of all, I have to say that 
our migration densities are rather small, so they are usually below 1%. I think the average is 0.6%, um, so you have to rescale the effects. But um, yeah, so you are interested in what drives the, the negative short run effect and the positive longer run effect. Hmm? Yeah, so, so maybe, maybe first, can you can you explain again what is like the difference between what you call um, uh, short term and long term, and um, and then um, yeah I mean I mean yeah what what can explain this um, I don't know maybe there is some uh, some uh, special things going on I don't know I have a bit it's just like interpretation it's a bit hard for me to to say okay so this is because like. I don't know because they are like in a in a low wage uh, sector and they have like super high uh, barriers uh, to work like language or whatever. I mean I, I don't know. I miss a bit like the, the 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 link between between the like the arrival and the and the wage effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we think that in general we would always expect a negative short run effect because we have this large labor supply shock, and but economic uh, theory then suggests that afterwards there's a positive catching up effect which could take place due to capital reallocation but also because the um yeah because the immigrants um improve their domestic um skill um knowledge and this could also then lead to positive effects yeah so Okay. Yeah, I also have a question of interpretation. Actually, I was quite curious to see that you find a positive effect on native employment, uh, but then this negative effect on native wages. So I was thinking whether this wage effect might also be a composition. So is it driven by uh, natives that just got a job? So, so is it generating a, an increase in employment of natives, but the ones that are getting a job are lower paid? Or are people that, I mean, can you distinguish between uh, the effect on wages of natives that had already a job in T minus one versus uh, the, the employment growth, uh, the ones that just got a job? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought. We we have not looked at it, but of course we could do that. So um, yeah, we just use the um, wage growth of mean wages within uh, one wage decile. No? So we could restrict it to persons who were already employed in the last mm -hmm. period. That's that's a good idea, yeah. And, um, and then as a follow-up, maybe you can also look at whether natives switch occupations as a result. This is also something that they show in the literature as a possible response, uh, which might explain why then in medium one you have this uh, more complementarity um, arriving. Mm. Um, and then maybe to show some heterogeneity by age as well. I mean, there are a few papers by Dasman showing that the effect on older workers is quite different from younger ones. Yeah, I mean, we have this heterogeneity already kind of in the wage decides because in the lowest wage decide, the, they are on average much younger than in the higher wage decides and also more female than in the higher wage decides. So actually, what this also shows is kind of that the young and female population is more heard, mm -hmm. at least in the short run, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if I may jump in, sorry, yeah. I, I had exactly the same question as, as Sarah regarding the composition effects. Um, and, and something, another question that is related to that is, how are the wage deciles defined? Is this like a, a fixed definition um, at the starting point of the, the panel or is it evolving? It is evolving, so. So if I'm, let's say, at, if I'm in the lowest decile at the, at the, let's say at the right end of the, the distribution and then the year later I, I earn a few cents more that make me switch to the, that make my wage switch a little bigger, uh, a little, little higher, I will move as a worker to the second visa, I guess. Yeah. So then again, that might be, there might be compositional effects as Sarah, another type of compositional effects uh, uh, as Sarah was alluding to. Um, so I think that's indeed something uh, interesting, uh, the question whether um, it's just a, 
it's just the fact that people are, are moving out. And in that case, it would actually be a good thing, right? If, if you have, let's say, a lot of people moving from the, a lot of the relatively higher earning people from the first quartile, uh, sorry, first p -style moving to the second p -style, and just having really, let's say, the, the, the very marginal workers that have very low uh, wages being stuck in this first p -style, you observe a negative, like a decrease in the average decile wage, but in fact, it's actually a good thing because it's just people moving up the, the career ladder. So I think then in the interpretation, this, this might be an important aspect. So um, I, I think these composition things uh, really deserve uh, a thoughtful um, extension because I think that, that's a super interesting and important part, like how much of this is actually work is being affected, like personal wages decreasing, or is it just like stuff going on on the labor market. Like it could also be that jobs are being created as you show actually there's a positive effect on employment but people start at the very low of the career ladder. So again, you will have more people earning a lower wage but is that a bad thing at the end? Because the alternative would be them being outside the labor, labor employment. So I'm just trying to, to get the, let's say the big picture of the, uh, the merging of the different results that, that you have. And, and there I think composition is, is really, the key, the key aspect. Yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting point. So, I mean, what we actually show is only for the recent immigrants that we see kind of this moving up over time. And we should also have a look at whether this happens for the native workforce. Yeah, that's true. And maybe as a follow up on that, um, I wonder whether you could also look at uh, switchings between part time and full time employment. Um, like, do you see natives becoming more or less likely to, to switch to, to part-time, in particular people that already had a job, um, not necessarily the newcomers, uh, because that might again be a slightly different mechanism. Um, but that could also be an interesting, in terms of displacement effects, that could be an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. And, and then I guess that the other dimension i'm not sure how, how far your, your data allows to do that but it's like job switching and industry switching um can you really could you could you say something about um like cl people climbing the ladder like observing because it's an individual level data set right so at the end you i think you you do a, a regional level analysis but you, you have the information at the individual level so you could kind of look how many people move up the uh the career ladder um in the different regions and how does their exposure to the different intensities of the migration shock affect this perspectives or this, this career evolution. Yes, indeed, we, we um, at some point of time, we had a look at this. Um, uh, it, it's just not so easy because also as um, Sarah pointed out, so there those we then we have to restrict to those who just have already been in the um, in the um, in employment in the yeah. previous year so then our kind of yeah the sample size decreases but yeah we should look into this again that's true i, th I think all these things that I, that sarah and i just mentioned um would help also to tackle lucas comment like kind of giving a bigger picture by looking at different things happening on the on the labor market and trying to get a, a broader uh, bigger picture story of of the impacts that one can observe yeah, yeah, um, yeah. From, from these shocks, uh, from these shocks, I, I think it would be nice to, and uh, maybe just a, a curiosity. Um, so this is admin data, and and you typically follow. So so you have, how should we uh, think about it? You you know where the person is in uh, two thousand and five, and then you will follow that individual until the end of the the panel. So you don't lose anyone by some form of data attrition or data selection process from the administrative um, data provider. Yeah, the only case in which we lose the person is if they drop out of the labor force okay, or yeah. if they go yeah, in informal in employment or um, the civil servants, they are and self-employed, they are not uh, included. But otherwise, we also can follow someone if they go to unemployment or just as job registered job seeker. So there's no data constraint at that. No, uh, no. At that dimension. So it's really like a part of the data that you keep and you have it for the full time. Um... Yeah, yeah. And maybe a last one, if, if Lucas and, and Sarah allow me, uh, that, that's also again, just out of curiosity linked to the data. Would you be able to, to track um, a circular migrant, like uh, someone that comes to Germany, works a couple of months, leaves, and then comes back? Is it like, is there like a unique identifier for a person or, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, that we have a unique identifier. So that's also with our temporary migration. So it might be that one person which left in 2017, so the last year of our sample. So we don't know whether this person worked in the next year or not. But even if you go for, for two years or if you leave for three years and return, you still have the same identifier. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. All right, then then I, I have just just one one remark maybe I mean the 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 data the data are spell data right so I mean even in terms of timing you could you could go a bit a bit deeper than what you're doing right so is this like because like uh, of I mean uh, data constraint that you have too too few points to, that that you go like uh, like yearly because uh, you are doing things at the at the yearly Right. Yeah, and that has a simple reason that most so most firms just send one wage notice per year. Oh yeah, that's true. So like uh, then it's, you have end of June uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wage data. Then it would be artificial to create a I see, quarterly I see. or monthly panel. No. I see. Okay. Uh, then uh, then I think I think we we are good then. Uh, if there is no no other question, then I will let Sarah to to end up the, the session. And for one time, while I'm the question manager, we are on time, so <laughs> it's quite good for our last last one. Yeah, I have a few more questions, but maybe let me conclude first, and then for all of those that um, want to stay on a little bit longer, uh, they can. Uh, so I'd just like uh, to mention that. Today, uh, it was our last uh, seminar for the semester, but actually uh, we have already decided that we are gonna keep up the seminar uh, next semester. Probably we are gonna change a little bit the format. Um, the idea now is to uh, have it more integrated with the senior seminar. And so probably we're gonna have a bi-weekly session at the same time as the senior, and it's gonna be one week uh, junior and one week senior. Uh, but we will communicate all the information as soon as we take the decision uh, through the mailing list. And so next week, we're going to have something a little bit different, given that we've been um, well having seminars for one year and many of you uh, come regularly would like to have a meet and greet uh, session where everybody can actually exchange and, and talk about research in a more informal setting. Uh, so this is going to be next uh, Monday at the usual time of the seminar. Uh, and we're going to organize some Zoom breakout rooms uh, so that you will be um, assigned to a small group and it's going to be easier uh, to basically get to know each other and talk about research with the other people that have been following the seminar and are interested in migration. Uh, so if you're interested, we're going to um, send the, the Zoom link a little bit later and you have a Google uh, registration form that is available on our website. So you can just uh, log, well, have a visit at our website and, and uh, register in the Google, Google form. Uh, so if not, uh, thank you very much for, for attending this seminar uh, so often, and we hope uh, we can see you again next year, um, still in the, in the Junior Migration Seminar.